Hi, welcome back. This week we're leaving North Dakota and heading to my home state of Minnesota, land of 10,000 lakes. Come on along. No offense, North Dakota, but after Theodore Roosevelt National Park, everything else here is sort of underwhelming. That's why when I see a sign for the world's largest Holstein cow, I have to take a look. Everyone, meet Salem Sioux. She's perched on a hilltop over the town of Salem, and you can see her from I-90. She's bigger than I expected. I'm between 5'7 and 5'8, and I only came up to her knee. Further down the highway in Jamestown, North Dakota, is the world's largest buffalo. Sensing a trend yet? After miles of endless farm and grasslands, we cross into Minnesota. I've rented a cabin for the week to escape the heat wave ravaging the middle of the country. It's in northwestern Minnesota and has its own pond or small lake with lots of waterfowl. I regularly saw white pelicans and many different varieties of ducks. A reality of life on the road is figuring out how to get stuff clean. You, your car, laundry, the dog, etc. So when you come across a business like this, it's an exciting day. I can check off two tasks at once. I pop the clothes in the washer, go out and scrub Ruby clean, pop the clothes in the dryer. Now I have a clean Jeep and clean clothes. Win-win. A week in this peaceful setting was exactly what we needed. Of course Minnesota has a world's largest Viking. We have more people of Norwegian heritage than live in all of Norway. Seriously. Then the time came to visit family in Minneapolis. This is where I got Ozzy as a puppy. We haven't been back for almost 10 years. A lot has changed, but a lot remains the same. Like folks enjoying Lake of the Isles on a beautiful summer day. What you think, Ozzy? Good to be back? The week went fast and temps were still high, so we decided to head for the north shore of Lake Superior. Locals joke that Minnesota has two seasons, winter and road construction. After a few hours or so on the road, we decided to take a break at Split Rock State Park. It gave Oz a chance to stretch his legs and smell all the things. I enjoyed the views of Lake Superior. They're really lovely this time of year. And the old historic lighthouse adds to the experience. Such a beautiful day.
Back on the road north, we head toward a couple of campgrounds in the state forest. Both are first come first serve and it's a Friday night, so I'm hoping we find a good spot. The first one was completely full, but the second one had a few spaces open, so we stayed. The next morning, it's time for breakfast and an adventure to the town furthest north along the lakeshore before you reach Canada. Grand Portage, Minnesota is on the Grand Portage Reservation and is home to the Grand Portage National Monument. Oz and I were excited to check out the old fort until we saw the sign. No dogs allowed. Oh well, let's go explore the rest of the grounds. Back at camp and it's time for dinner. An easy meal I like to make with ingredients that don't require refrigeration is rice and madras lentils. Plus I add a can of white meat chicken breast to mine. It takes about 20 minutes and you have a hearty, flavorful meal. Oz was sad I didn't share any of my dinner with him this time. Poor buddy. The rest of the week was spent taking care of work commitments and soaking in all the lovely nature all around us. Tired dog is a happy dog. Toward the end of our stay, the weather switched from sunny to stormy. Just a little afternoon thunderstorm in northern Minnesota. It's about 4.15 in the afternoon. It's dark like it's 8 o'clock. You can probably hear that rumble. Ooh, that was a big one. So we're hanging out near some miner. Ozzy's down below in the Jeep. It's only supposed to last about a half an hour, so we'll just wait it out. It's pretty though. One of the things I like about this Ursa Minor is the hard shell top. 
it's really been nice in these last few thunderstorms we've had. There's been a couple over the last week or so. Um, and they've been coming from a direction that is basically south moving up north and east. Um, and the way I'm positioned right now at this spot, that's my driver, my basically the front driver's side. Um, and so that hard shell's really taken a lot of the brunt, of the heavy rain and such. And the canvas has stayed relatively dry on the lee side or passenger side. Um, and obviously not much going on in here. So yeah, pretty happy with it. So I think you can hear it's coming down pretty good out there. This canvas edge here is still bone dry. A little bit of water sprinkles there on the netting and some drippy drips coming off the hard gel. This is one area that I found I've had to weatherproof quite often is this junction where the canvas meets the bug screen. Water tends to pool there, and if your bedding or anything is up against it on the inside down here, oh look, there's a moth stuck. Um, it can it can get a little wet, so I try to keep my all my linens and things away from that edge. Good morning, Ozzy. Do you want to get up, or are you still being a sleepyhead? Are you a sleepyhead? Do you want breakfast? You gotta get up. Look at the sweet baby. Oh, is it too early? It's eight o'clock, buddy. Kiss, kiss. As a native Minnesotan and somebody who's now a firm fan of world's largest things, I felt obligated to go find the world's largest hockey stick in Eveleth, Minnesota, and I was not disappointed. Now off to see what's in the Superior National Forest. First stop, the White Face Reservoir, where Oz got to bite some water. Just outside Hoyt Lakes, Minnesota, you'll find the Ski Bow Lookout. The views are incredible. You can see for about 30 miles in any direction. Time for a shortcut through the National Forest back toward camp. Garmin wasn't happy with this detour, but I enjoyed it. Lots of trails for motorized and non-motorized fun. Our time here is coming to an end. Would love to stay longer, but we need to keep moving east. Be sure to subscribe to follow our adventures and hit that like button too. See you next week. Safe travels.